Outer Bank Season 3 could have been a fitting end to the series if the final scene was different. Hello everybody, welcome to my review for Season 3 of Outer Banks. Now, before we get further into the video, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. It's free and it's the best way to support the channel. And I know this is coming out of nowhere, given how I didn't review Seasons 1 and 2 of the show. But I want to review this season because I like Outer Banks. It's one of those shows where you can just turn your brain off and just watch this stupid shit unravel. I liked season one and consider it the best season of the series. Season two was good but messy. So when I think of season three, well, I thought it was pretty okay. Starting out with the positives, I liked the subplot with Big John and John B working together to try and find the missing piece of the totem thing they needed for El Dorado. And I think they did a good job with Big John's character in general. I do think they shouldn't have revealed him to being alive in season two because there's a scene in that in this season that falls really flat for me because of it. I'm talking about the scene where John B and Big John reunite. It's a sweet moment, but it would have been even better if we, the audience, didn't know that he was still alive. All about uh, subverting expectations. Or I think I'm using that term really wrong. Um, I'm not a film nerd. I also like the subplot with the other Pogues trying to get the cross back. Even though it's a recycled storyline that was in Season 2 where John B and Sarah were planning to steal the gold. But I think that this heist is a lot more enjoyable. Speaking of the Pogues, I think JJ and Pogue were the two main standouts here. I enjoyed every scene these two were in, and it helps that they're both played by charismatic actors. Rudy Pankow, Rudy Pankow and Jonathan Davis absolutely kill it this, in this season, and are hands down the most enjoyable to watch. Moving on, I also like the stuff with Singh. He, I think he's an effective but underwritten villain. Moving on to the mix, though, I think the cameras from the past two seasons are heavily sidelined in this season. Specifically, uh, Rafe and Ward. Rafe is only here to burn a cross and decide whether or not he can kill his dad, whereas Ward is stuck in a boat house for the majority of the season, until the finale. I do like that Ward gets somewhat of a redemption arc, even if it doesn't work that well for, for me. Although he sacrificed himself to save Sarah, I'm going to call bullshit on him being dead. In this show, people who die doesn't really don't really intend to die. Uh, Big John was someone who died prior to the events of the series, but that's magically retconned to reveal that he was surviving on the on an island until Singh found him. I highly doubt the war, uh, the writers would keep Ward dead. If they do a fourth season without him, feel free to comment that I was wrong in the future. I also hate the strange love triangle storyline with Hopper, Sarah, and John B. It's been done three times now, and it's hands down the least enjoyable part in this season and in any other season of the show. I also just don't like Topper as a character. He was fine in season one, but it's forgotten about in season two, and here he just feels very out of place with the tone of the show. The show now is not the grounded teen drama that season one was, and it's doing things on a much more bigger scale, so why on earth are they still doing a love triangle storyline? It doesn't help that it takes up three episodes, and it just feels redundant at this point. This storyline honestly just feels like the writers don't know what to do with Sarah and, and just pair her with Topper every time they uh, her and John B break up because he's already he's a already established character, which results in the writers doing the same thing they do when it came to this storyline. Topper confronts Sarah, or sorry, Topper comforts Sarah. Sarah makes a move. She regresses and tells John B. He gets mad, they break up, Topper sleeps in, either him or John B will start fighting and Sarah apologizes to him, rinse and repeat. I don't know, I hope they don't do this shit in season 4. It's not good. Do something new with Topper writers. Pair him with Rafe or something. Also, I'm just saying this now, the writer strike is happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> this was written before the writer strike, I promise. Moving on, I really don't like the JJ and Kiara relationship all that much. These are two characters that had playful banter that was never hinting towards an actual relationship, but seems like something the fans forced the writers into, which isn't cool in the slightest. I also don't like the ending of the season, where a dude comes to the pose with another treasure. It's not only forced, but it completely feels like an ending that was just tacked on because Netflix knew this series can't end. This season should have been the series finale. Big John found El Dorado. The Pogues are finally doing good in life. They're finally happy. So why introduce a new treasure? It makes no goddamn sense. 
I also don't like how it just jumps ahead after Big John's death because it leaves the storyline with Key and her parents unresolved, which is something that bothers the fucking hell out of me. This storyline is pretty vital to not only Key's character, but to the story in, I think it's the story in general. Because throughout the series, she consistently does stuff that, that disappoints her parents. And they try their best to do what's right, even if it's drastic. Like sending her to a, uh, I don't want to say, like a, I think a summer camp facility or some shit. Or a, a, like a correctional facility. Yeah. The fuck is that? It seems that Natalie just ignoring the subplot and leaving it unfinished really sucks. It seems like a way to get people to tune back into the next season. It just doesn't sit right with me. Outer, Outer Banks Season 3 is not the best season of the show, but it's passable. I'm hoping Season 4 is a bit better, but who knows what they'll do now. I'm going to give Outer Banks Season 3 a solid 7.5 out of 10. Do better next time. Ba -da -ba. Goodbye. Like and subscribe.